Hey guys, it's Tiffany and I'm back again finally with my video um, and we're going to be looking at the Polaroid Spectra System AF as I did in the previous video and that I am picking up at this moment and um, we're gonna load it up with film and I'm really 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 excited to be doing this um, you know I've been waiting forever and I'll get to talking about troubleshooting and just the process of ordering the film and how I went about doing that possibly in another video but here I am just um, opening up the camera just showing off what it looks like when you open it up I am so 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 pumped to show you guys what this camera has to offer and once I put the camera away I'm going to show you what the film looks like so over here, this box that is in the center, that is the film that I got from the Impossible Project. Um, I'll get to how they came about a little bit later, but you want to make sure, especially if you have the same cameras I have, the Polaroid Spectra system or uh, any of the Spectra cameras, that you do get the film that says Image and Spectra. Yeah, that is really important. I almost made the mistake of purchasing the wrong film and opening up the box and the film pack. Um, so definitely the image and spectra type is completely different from the um, other types of film that the Impossible Project sells. They have 600 film, they have other kinds of film. I just made the stupid error of uh, almost opening up the wrong pack and wasting my money. But here I am just uh, showing you guys what the box looks like. Um, there's the Impossible Project website there and the logo. And I guess we're taking a look at the back. Um, I am going to zoom, not zoom, sorry, focus a little bit on that. So if you want, you can pause the video and take a look at everything. But I'm just going to point out some of the stuff like, okay, they do show you the picture of the camera that uses the film. And they have a bunch of other things like... Mm, uh, what kind of film it is, so obviously it's color as opposed to black and white. And unlike previous Polaroid film, um, the Impossible Project film packs only have eight instant uh, photos. Um, there's other information there about uh, the film itself and what it does, but um, you guys feel free to pause the video and read that on your own time. And yes, always important to look at um, when the film expires. So it is November right now, and I don't know if you can see very clearly, here I am trying to like focus it a bit, but um, it is etched in, printed in, and it says 1015, so October 2015. Um, usually the film, even though it was technically expired in October, should be fine um, if you use it within the next few months, or even from what I've heard, like even a year, a couple years after. Um, but, you know, because they're releasing film, you know, up to date, I wouldn't see why you'd uh, order old Impossible Project film. Um, if you want to take the risk, feel free to go ahead and purchase old film or film that has uh, already discontinued, you know, from the Polar Polaroid company. Um, I think the last time they created film was 2009 or so. So here's the packaging, it is very shiny, and I don't know, there's something about the crinkle factor <laughs> of the plastic wrapping that is very therapeutic. And um, I did put up another video just before I published this one of me just unboxing and opening everything. I don't know, maybe I'm just really strange like that and I really <laughs> like the sound of crinkling and opening and unboxing things. Um, but yeah, basically, here I am opening the film and all that good stuff, and I'm so excited. I'm about to load it up. Woo! All right, so um, just a nice little reminder of that little tab. You want to make sure that the tab and those two, I guess, openings that show the metal part of the film pack that essentially is part of the battery that, you know, uh, boots up the camera. You want to make sure that is facing downwards and where you see impossible, that logo, you want to put that face up. So here I am showing you the camera again and we're going to load the film really soon. So yep, open it up, make sure the tab is on the bottom and that impossible project, that side is on top. And as soon as you close it, 
there you go it makes that beautiful noise and um, that top sheet you want to make sure that top sheet comes right out if there are any problems with it um, maybe I can address it in another video but it is probably because your camera is jammed it's not a difficult thing to fix um, if you want to wait for a future video for me let me know in the comments otherwise um, there are a couple of other videos on YouTube and on the internet that show you how to fix a jammed issue with your camera all right so now, um, this is just a shot of what I wanted to take with my first film. Um, I took a picture of some leaves um, on my phone, on my iPhone, and I wanted to take a picture of that. And I figured, you know, if this is a camera that does autofocus and it's all it's chalked up to be, let's see what happens. So, alright, let me show you how my first film came out, so I was very, very disappointed. Um, if you're unsure about what this means with all the colors, usually if you see brown on it, it really means that the chemicals that are inside that film that are supposed to help develop it, um, it means that it's basically dried out, aka expired. So I was kind of disappointed. And that bottom part, those little three little hill things, I guess, um, that is an indication that the film is still in the process of developing and that color is a good sign but it never changed i waited for a while and i put it in the dark and it looked exactly the same so i guess the chemicals dried out and i was disappointed but i decided okay let me take another picture and this is what i got um i was pretty disappointed that it was so blurry but um you know it's all about tinkering and figuring out you know what the best optimal lighting is and, and settings are for you to take you know the picture that you want to take and I think it was a little bit too dark um, where I was taking it and I did turn the flash off um, I guess wishful thinking I thought it would come out a little more successful but it kind of looks cool you know with the blurry feel um, and let me show you just a couple other photos that I took so a couple other photos I took um, a photo of what I thought would be a really cool looking uh, lit up sky. <laughs> um, again, I did not turn on the flash for this, so I think it is very important for you to turn the flash on even though there's an option for you to turn it off. Um, yeah, it's really all about practice to be honest. And um, here is the fourth picture I've taken thus far. It is to date probably the most successful photo I've taken. Yes, that is a photo of me. Yes, I look very awkward in it, but I did tinker around with the self timer and it worked out pretty well. Um, I was surprised that it worked out pretty well, but as long as you set up the timer and everything works out that way, it the autofocus is pretty good. And the flash I thought would wash my face out a lot, um, but I mean, maybe it's not as reliable in this picture, but it's not that bad looking at the physical copy um, and you know that's basically it for now um, I haven't gone through my entire first pack of film I still have definitely a lot more to practice with and tinker around with so I guess after maybe figuring things out and buying more film and and, and playing around with it I'll put up another video and I'll be able to give y'all more advice, more reliable advice after using it for a while. Um, but one thing I do want to talk about is um, the ejecting issue with the film. So when I took out my film for the first time, I got, okay, I'm going to show this right about now. So I was trying to figure out why my first film wasn't coming out and I was really confused it made the noise the whirring noise where you know they're about to eject the photo and nothing happened and um, I'll show you a video clip of right before when I you know just put the film pack in the impossible project that top black not sheet but I guess that card came out that was fine but right here right there is where um, this black plastic thing I'm not really sure what the black plastic sheet really serves as a function for. I heard that it's to protect the film. I'm not too sure. But um, it came out when, you know, the film card was coming out, but it didn't come out fully. And I actually had to manually, 
uh, I don't want to use the word like we basically like rip it out but I did basically rip it out and I was kind of scared of opening the loading part of the camera but I did end up opening it really fast to try and get that plastic sheet out and um, if that does happen to you uh, don't freak out it won't ruin any of your film I mean after doing that I still was able to take pictures with the next three photos so I'm pretty sure the rest of my pack will be fine but yeah in case that happens don't freak out don't freak out just you know get that uh, plastic sheet out and try and take another picture um, this is definitely not exactly the cheapest um, I guess cheapest hobby, cheapest, uh, you know, kind of activity to do, especially with how much the film costs and whatnot. But I, I mean, to be honest, 20 something dollars for a pack. I mean, it does mean that you have to use more sparingly, but it makes for more memorable, uh, memorable photos, I suppose. Um, so I guess this is it for now. Uh, feel free to subscribe and like and comment on this video if you have any questions or any concerns or you want to share any <laughs> better solutions than what I have shared today. Um, but otherwise, thank you again for watching and I will be back soon with more content. So I'll see you guys later. Alright, bye!